Guys, what's up? Cameron from the Spike Feed, and of course, surprise, the Stoneblade player once again wants to talk about a Stoneblade deck. Yeah. If you're a Legacy player, you probably feel the same way that I do. The format is incredibly difficult, challenging, rewarding, and oh so fun to play. But because of its price and the lack of high level competitive play, the format does tend to stagnate. There's just not a lot of innovation. There's some, but not a lot. So when a new deck pops up in a major level tournament, myself and a lot of other people are intrigued. And that's just what happened at SCG Baltimore back in February of 2017 when Andrew Calderon took this blue-white stone blade list to a fifth place finish. So what makes this deck so intriguing? Is it the spell quellers? Is it new Thalia? Or is it two innocuous 1-1 flyers that have a lot of bang for their buck? So let's take a look at this new blue-white spirit blade deck that I've tested and have had a great time playing. Okay, so if it's not obvious, I'm a diehard Stone Blade player, but I realize the archetype has plenty of faults. Lately, I've come to realize how important turn one can be. With many Stone Blade type decks, I end up twiddling my thumbs on turn one. That's one of the reasons why I love this new Spirit Blade deck. You have plenty of things to do on turn one, namely in the form of Mausoleum Wanderer and judges familiar. So don't be fooled, these two cards can be incredibly powerful, especially in Legacy. There's just not that much creature removal in the format, and your opponent is going to have to decide. Do they remove this with their swords or a fatal push, or do they wait? Casting these on turn 1 becomes an instant force spike to protect your Stoneforge Mystic on turn 2, and if Lingering Souls has taught us anything as Stoneblade players, it's not to discount the power of a 1-1 flyer. Too often this can easily swing for one multiple turns, which by turn five or six can have a significant impact to the rest of the game. Spell Queller is interesting in Legacy, and I personally don't know how sold I am on the card. Sure, it can temporarily exile an abrupt decay or stop a blood moon, but I find the three casting costs to be a little limiting in this deck, especially when we're playing New Thalia and Trune Nemesis. That being said, against a number of opponents, including Elves and Show and Tell, I found this card to be extremely powerful. Up next, we have yet another combo that helps protect your creatures. G Probe allows you to dig further in your deck while getting much needed information from your opponent. And from that information, you can do what you need to do with Meddling Mage. Meddling Mage has become a boon when it comes to protecting my other important creatures against an Abrupt Decay or a Miracle Terminus. I've talked about New Thalia previously, but I have to reiterate that she is incredibly powerful in Legacy. Whether it's bringing in an opponent's fetch land tapped or causing a sneak attack to just plain brick, this first strike creature has a lot going for it. Thalia is probably my favorite card printed in 2016. The three mana is a little annoying, but the benefits far outweigh the limitations. Lastly, we have a pretty solid mana base that I'm actually really appreciating. When going with the Jeskai or Resper route, too often we rely too heavily on dual lands, which are susceptible to an inopportune blood moon or wasteland. Running six basics helps out a great deal, and it allows you to keep a tempo game going by playing four wastelands. Okay, so the negatives. One thing I really struggled with when I first saw this deck was the lack of brainstorms. Andrew's list was only playing G probes. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just couldn't get behind playing a stone blade list without brainstorms. Too often I feel it helps in too many situations. Obviously, he knows what he's doing by placing in the top five, but with my iteration of this deck, I find it paramount that you play Brainstorms. I'm curious to hear what you guys think, but to me, it's still just too powerful of a card. 
So, what do you guys think? Is this the deck that's going to bring Stoneblade back into the upper echelons of competitive play? Is the deck lacking anything else? More importantly, if you're a blue player out there and you play Legacy, is there an instance when you wouldn't play Brainstorms? I'm curious to know what you guys think. You can always leave your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, I will see you next time.